I thought I was just going to be able to hold the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's great to be here and uh, have uh, uh, won this uh, with a great football team and a great organization uh, and from a great city. So uh, it's been a phenomenal experience for the last few hours. I haven't, I haven't slept, but uh, my statement was uh, if you have questions about the fire department. Coach Andy Reid, it's Peter Schrager from NFL Network and Fox Sports. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm told my friend. <laughs> uh, I gotta just ask, last night or even this morning, you know, a moment of solitude or even just a moment of quiet and let's all the confetti and everything. What was it like to just reflect upon not only the past 24 hours, but perhaps the past 30 years? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I tell you, it's awesome. Um, I'm not sure it's completely settled in. Um, but um, you know, it's a it's a great experience, and especially doing it with the one you know, of the guys I was able to do it with and uh, the organization. So it's, it's the, we we all know that it's not a one man show. That um, it takes it takes a team to get there, and not just the players, not just the coaches, but everybody. So um, you know, that's a part you can, that's a part you can think about. It. Sit back, all the hard work that everybody's done to get you to this point right here. Andy? Yeah, are you here? Right or left? John Crick from the Sun and Post Media. Eric Vanity said that you got that goal line touchdown play from watching Michigan's 1948 Rose Bowl win over USC. But was that play in maybe with the spinorama a little bit of mad magicians? But wasn't it more seventies reverse option? No, it was. Uh, it was forty eight. Uh, my brother's high school coach was actually in that game for uh, for USC, and so I had a little bit of tape I went back through and um, pulled that out. We actually had a whole pack of it, so you have to wait till next year. To do that. <laughs> There's some good stuff. Andy, uh, yeah, uh, I know you're only 61, uh, but you've been coaching for 21 years now. Kind of along the lines of reflection, do you do you kind of think about how long you want to keep doing this? Is, I mean, I, you know what? I, no, I really I haven't. Um, I still enjoy doing what I'm doing. Uh, I got this young quarterback over here that. Um, makes his life easy every day. Every day. It's a pleasure to uh, come to work and know that you have an opportunity to coach him and, and his team. So, um, and Brett Pitch uh, understands you know, what it takes to win, number one, also the kind of people that, um, that we enjoy working with. So he brings those kind of guys in and uh, makes it a job. So I really haven't gotten to answer here. Andy, along the lines of the uh, play, play in, plays call from last night, did you get any uh, Hank Stram plays in there? And um, why, why was that important to you to, to acknowledge the past that way in the last? Yeah, so um, they set the foundation. Uh, we didn't, first of all, we didn't get a play in Hank Stram. Not, not that we didn't want to or didn't, you know, but we, we didn't. Um, but the Bobby Bells and the, um, I mean, you know, Willie Lanier's, uh, Lynn Dawson's, I mean, they're the ones that set the foundation for the AFL and also the merger of it to the NFL. Uh, plus, they support us as, as ex-players. I mean, they're there for us. And they were feeling it just like we were feeling it. I mean, they were so excited. To see that, um, that's something. And, and Clark Hunt, um, he loves to have those guys come back and, and uh, be a part of it. And so, um, with that, he maintained that history. Uh, it's so, so easily lost in this league. And, but they, and I, those guys handle it the right way, they don't ask for anything. But they come and they talk to our rookies, and then they're always welcome at practice and walk. So, I mean, we appreciate that.
Coach, how you doing? Jared Bell, USA Today. Congratulations. Appreciate you. Got a two point, a two part question for you here. Um, when, when you think about the fact that your team has such great quick strike ability to change the momentum of games, we've seen it through this playoffs throughout the season. How do you explain how that momentum happens? And the second question would be, when you think about the off season ahead, you, you might be a little behind, you think, or I'm saying that facetiously, but that's a great problem to have in terms of setting the course for next year. Yeah, so the quick strike part of it, um, uh, we, we've got explosive players. We have guys that trust each other, so that, that's the biggest thing, where uh, you're down by 24 points, you don't collapse as a team mentally. And, um, they, they keep fighting, and, and then the defense rallies, and, and then the special team rallies. It's, uh, I mean, and somewhere along the line, each group has had an opportunity to change a game. Whether it's a return on special teams or an interception, a fumble recovery on, on the defensive side, a big stop on fourth down, um, and then uh, on offense, again, the quick strike part of that comes in there where, um, you know, with Pat and the receivers, his guys, um, you know that you're, you're never out of it. So, and then the second part, I can't remember what the second part was. The it's off, like a, the off season. Yeah, the off season was short. No, that's how short it was, but that's my memory right there. Um, no, that's okay, though. That's all right. Uh, we know we'll be a target, not that we weren't this year. Um, We've got plenty of things that uh, we've got that we look forward to installing uh, this next year. Uh, we've got a nice long list of good stuff, and uh, we'll keep growing as an offense and defense. This was just our first year with Spags, uh, and he's as creative a mind as anybody. And Dave just gets better and better every year as a special teams coach. And then, uh, like I mentioned with Brett, he keeps bringing in these players that create this great competition that really helps make you better uh, in the long run. Coach Reed, good morning, congratulations. Federico Rivera from the Cortes, from Radio 3 in Mexico City. Hey, nine wins in a row since the Stadio Azteca, it, it seems that the Mexico team brought to you with young guys. You know, the Chiefs is the first team in the campaign history to win three games after trading by the ten or more points in a single postseason. But this is not it did not easy to come from behind. What the spirit of this team? How could that happen? Um, what do you say to your players to, to uh, be a um, resilient um, on the moment that uh, my colleague uh, said before? Yes. So we have. We were down by quite a little bit each game, and uh, the guys are resilient. Uh, they're, they're mentally tough. They trust each other. They like being around each other. They, you know, it's uh, there's a certain energy that they have. And they don't really care uh, if you're up or down. They're going to bear down and, and uh, go win the game. They know that they've got to play four quarters strong and, and uh, believe in that. So, you know, and we love Mexico City. It's a great place. We're treated very well. We appreciate that. Good morning, Andy. South Carolina, Antonio, ESPN. Congratulations. Thanks, Al. What are some of the special characteristics that you saw early on in Patrick Mahomes and that have developed that have allowed him to lead these comebacks in three successive playoff games? Yeah, so Brett Veach, uh, Ward, Dorsey, and I out on Patrick Mahomes when he first became a starter and uh, just said, this is a great player I've ever seen. And I'm going, that's a, that's a pretty bold statement. You know, he's seen a few guys. So, uh, so he kept laying the tape on my desk and, and uh, I'm going, this is like the greatest player I've ever seen. You know, I mean, it was one of those deals. He was making throws like he made last night and doing that. And, um, and then you go, well, let's see how he does this in the NFL. I mean, he can't do all this stuff. So uh, he came to us and started doing all that stuff. You know, looks, and it just kind of came casual to him. Although he works on it, he could like, you know, there's part that is just uh, easy for him. And uh, he, sees, he sees the field, which I appreciate. You can see that in college, on his college day. 
And that, you say, well, quarterback sees. No, they don't. Not like he does. He comes off and um, he can tell you accurately what he saw that play. And, and so there's video evidence if you're right or wrong every play. And, uh, and after a bit, you go, man, this guy, this guy's unbelievable. Yeah, he can take it all in. Uh, he challenges you as a coach to give him more. So he, his aptitude is ridiculous. And, and so uh, as a coach, you love that. You're able to feed him uh, new plays, and he gobbles those things up and makes them look even better than they did on paper. And, uh, and then he's a great leader. So he's got some innate ability to make everybody around him better. You saw that last time. Good morning, Andy, and congratulations to the same farmer for the Los Angeles Times. Where are you? We're okay, gotcha. Yeah. Can you kind of give us a recap of uh, what your night was like after the confetti fell? And did you spend time with the trophy? Did you sleep at all last night? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really sleep last night, uh, uh, but I didn't spend it with the trophy. Well, I spent it with my trophy wife. <laughs> Curious on the, the go ahead score, just how close was that with Damien getting in, and if that would have been overturned, would you have uh, would you have gone for a fourth down? Well, we, we had a good one, and uh, we had a good play there, so there was a chance we would have done that. And listen, there's no tomorrow in that game, so um, you gotta. Uh, that's it. And, and that's why we uh, we went for fourth downs during the season, but we were gonna if they were close. We we're, were going for them in this game, so uh, there's a chance we would have done that. Last question. Todd Ebo, Sports Radio 810 in Kansas City. You know, we, we've talked to you a bunch about kind of getting ready for this game and, and all the stuff you have to go through to do that. When, when you think about all the people you've met and all the fans and coaches and players, how many phone calls and messages, when you look at your phone, hundreds? What have you got there with uh, all the people you work with? Yeah, there are hundreds. I've been, it's humbling. I appreciate it. Um, you know, they're somewhere they've all touched your life and made you a better person. So um, it's, uh, it's a humbling. Thank you, Coach. Okay, thanks.